Hey, yo, Craig, let's talk about the time machine. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm going to call it. I mean, we all know the thing, right? Man, if I had a time machine, I could go back in a time and I could change things knowing what I know now. But like every science fiction movie that's ever been made, you know, if you go back in time and change something, then you mess up everything from there forward. And so you have to go through a lot of trouble to hide the fact that you changed something. Or people are going to find out why things are so messed up. Because one thing's for sure, if you change something, if you go back in time and change something, you're going to mess something up. What am I talking about? Well, they're not exactly time machines, but I, you might get the idea of what I'm, I'm talking about because it's so touchy now. You almost can't even say certain words on certain channels of the Internet without uh, getting kicked off. So we're going to call it the time machine. But what we're talking about is stuff having to do with the last election. So what happened? Well, it's becoming really obvious now that leading up to the election, um, a lot of laws were changed at the last minute by people who weren't authorized to change those laws. You know, only the legislature is allowed to change laws as far as voting goes, according to the Constitution. And uh, that's not who did it in, in a lot of cases. It was secretaries of state or special committees that had to do with voting, stuff like that. Especially in four key states or four key areas, which, which really made a huge difference as far as the election goes. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with all the numbers coming out recently, um, do yourself a favor and spend some time weeding through this stuff because a lot of people in pretty much every single state uh, have spent a lot of time sifting through the numbers trying to make sense of them. And uh, that's why I say the time machine, because what appears to be the case, and, and certainly we're finding out more every day, is that perhaps the whole election, the numbers for the entire election that we've seen are completely manufactured. It doesn't actually reflect real voting. Um, were your votes counted? Certainly. But it seems like they were superseded. In other words, it appears like, although our votes went in, other numbers were, were anticipated. Let me say that better. <laughs> they already knew the results of the election before it took place. That's what it appears to be, um, at least on the electronic side. So knowing, and, and we don't know exactly who did it yet, um, and a lot's going to be happening in the next couple of weeks for people analyzing what, what may have happened. Um, but certainly we know that people have interfered with the voting machines. We know this. We know that there are modems inside the machines, and they told us there wouldn't be. The CEO of Dominion told us, nope. Machines cannot connect to the internet, can't connect to anything. That's not true. We know that the components inside the machines are, a lot of them are made in China, Russia, or, or states uh, kind of more aligned with their wishes than ours. Um, and that's not supposed to be the case either. Uh, there's a lot of things about the technology that we're using right now to vote um, that should worry all of us quite a bit. And that's because these machines count votes using at least a decimal point in three places after the number. So in other words, you don't have one vote. You've got a portion of one vote or maybe a little bit more than one vote, but it's not one. That's very odd, right? That shouldn't be the case. Um, you shouldn't need a computer to count votes. But we're convinced and we've been convinced that well these machines have to be very complicated because voting's a complicated business you know there's there's different votes for different precincts and you have to be able to tally that one way or another but i'm not very convinced of that i i remember back when uh, we used paper ballots and the type i used we would we would slide our ballot into a um, kind of a notebook 
that showed basically in big letters exactly what was on the paper ballot. The paper ballot would tell you the categories and, and who to vote for. And then the notebook would kind of have the same thing in, in bigger writing. And right next to it was, was a hole. You'd take this little pin and you'd push it through the hole next to the person you're voting for, and that would stab through into the voting card and push out you know, a little tab. And, of course, then there were the famous dangling chads, as they call those little tabs, chads, and sometimes they would pop out all the way and maybe it would dangle there and maybe it would get messed up in the machine. That was a big deal back in you know, the, the, the Bush versus Gore election. And... Uh, you know, it, it wasn't really a big deal at all until it came down to that, that one part of Florida, I think it was. It was a great way to vote because you could see clearly who you voted for. You could take that thing out and look at it, and yep, sure enough, there's a hole next to the person I voted for. and Put it in there, and it just reads, you know, what holes are there. And, and it was very simple, and it was, it was really easy to pull them back out and rerun it if you had to. It wouldn't change. The numbers would come out the same because it was just reading holes in a card and you're the one that knew exactly what the holes meant because you saw it. What we have now, though, is an electronic thing. So you go in there and, yes, it's, it's clear who you're voting for, this, the end, and you poke your button and then, yeah, it tells you who you voted for at the end. Yep, I agree with that and it goes in and it'll print out this card for you and it's got stuff on there that, you know, seems to make sense. And then it's got one of those those QR codes or, you know, it's got some other little thing on it that you, you don't know what it means. It's the computer reads that. That's where the problem is. Um, it can print anything it wants to, but what it's actually counting could be different. And that's precisely what happened. Because what we're finding out is that evidently people were accessing voter logs so that they could see all of the people in a given state or county or, or however they want to parse it up. They could look at this entire list of everyone that was eligible to vote. They can go back in time and, and get a pretty good idea of how many of those people who are eligible to vote actually vote on a regular basis. And they can take a pretty good guess that, well, there's a bunch of people that aren't going to show up because that's usually the case. It's where anywhere from, you know, we're a little better than half of the people vote. And so what they're doing is they're just going to fill, they're, they're going to vote for all the people who wouldn't usually show up. So all of a sudden you've added a bunch of votes for your guy and nobody's the wiser, right? Because, hey, it's not like it's more than the number of people that can vote. It's exactly the amount of people who can vote. And that would be very weird, but this is a weird time. And, you know, with, of course, all the special provisions, mail-in ballots and stuff like that, it, you know, it's harder and harder to keep track of who's doing what. Um, but that was, again, part of the design. Again, being confusing, you know, laying down kind of a, a layer of confusion so that people don't see the time machine at work. So what we had is not only were the machines doing the bidding of, um, of whoever, but then you had the usual suspects that always commit voter fraud every single election. Um, and there's some cities that are just really well known for this. I mean, lots and lots and lots of people get arrested all the time for voter fraud. It, it happens constantly. We're always assured that it's not numbers that make any difference, but you know, no one's ever actually gone in to prove that. And uh, it ends up, I think, that probably for a long time it made a big difference. Um, we just had no idea how bad it was. We didn't know about the time machine aspect, right? So getting back on track, what I'm saying is that as, as people are using the, the, the time machine to... to change the votes overall, you've got to you got to kind of backfill. You have to be able to, you know you're going to probably get audited in a few places. I mean, it always happens. And so you have to create a situation that looks plausible, that looks like, well, you know, maybe this isn't so out of whack. If I look at the whole picture, you know, let's, uh, you know, let's look at, at the thing as, as, a, as a larger, it's the entire United States. When we look at it, yeah, you know, the, Trump won in the places that you'd expect him to win, and he lost in places that we had been told uh, he could possibly lose in. So when the election was over, 
we're you know we'd been told by these polling companies and 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 these these other experts that oh you know Joe is 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 miles ahead and, and Trump voters knew that that wasn't true but but we knew that it was going to be a tight race we we all felt like yeah this is this is going to be really tough and so it was important for both sides to get everyone out that they could and certainly they did and and with mail in voting and early voting and everything else i mean i no doubt i there there was a a higher turnout than, than normal because it was made easy over, I don't know, well over a month you could vote in some places. So, yeah, more people turned out. And so because it was unusual in the way that you, you had more time and you had different ways of voting and all that, um, if some categories, you know, age categories and vote categories were really, really high in turnout, say, well, you know, this this made it easy, so that's not that weird, right? Eh, yeah, maybe not. And so we are we could accept certain things. But we started to see in the aftermath of the vote that things didn't didn't make much sense. You had bellwether areas that, that are, are really good indicators. Um, and most of those were thrown way off. You know, in other words, like down ballot, the Republicans did exceptionally well. But in a lot of cases, they might have voted for all Republicans except for Trump. And that's really unusual. That's not the way it usually happens. It usually happens that people are much more passionate about voting for the president. And then the down ballot is sort of carried along on, on his coattails. But we're told, well, a lot of people just hate Trump so much. That, but they're Republicans, so they just refused to vote for him. And that was kind of the story. And I, I, I bet I heard that a dozen times from different friends. Well, you know, that's just how it is. It's like, well, that doesn't make any sense at all. But that's what we're being told. Um, but at the same time, if, if you look at, you know, we mentioned the bellwethers, but you look at, like, neighboring counties or states that, that, that have a lot in common with, with some of these particular areas, and he, Biden didn't do very well at all you know, in, in all the surrounding areas. Not much interest in Biden at all, except for these key, key spots. And then you also see that a lot of money was poured into these areas. I mean, everyone knows the Zucker bucks, you know, the, 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 the drop boxes and stuff like that. But they gave, they gave tens of millions of dollars to every state, you know, for the most part. I mean... You know, we you know, in some areas we know what they spend it on, but in a lot of other areas we have no idea. So, you you know that like Bloomberg and, and Zuckerberg and a bunch of these guys spent tons of money to get the vote out in these these key Democrat areas, and so we were always told to expect huge turnout numbers. But these were more like you know hundred percent. You know, this is just numbers that's like oh, that, that never happens. But but again, we're told well this is just exceptional. Joe got more votes than any president ever. But so did Trump, right? Trump got more votes than, than any president ever. Plus, he got, what, like 12 million more votes than he got the first time around, which is extremely unusual. I mean, that just doesn't happen. But still lost because Joe was I mean, miles more popular than Obama or anywhere else. Well, the problem is when you, when you compare, because Obama did exceptionally well when, when he won the first time. Um, because there's a lot of excitement, you know, it was, it was something new, and, and the man at the time had, had a, a really compelling message. Of course, we, we know how that all turned out, but, but when he's running, you know, there's a lot of excitement for Obama, and, and Republicans even came over to, to his side in some cases. But when Joe ran, I mean, gosh, the guy was running out of his basement, right? And we hardly ever saw him, and, and he was always, no, there was no excitement. There was no excitement for Kamala, that's for sure. I mean, that's why she dropped out of the race before even the first vote, because I just she, she couldn't bring in any money from any donors and, and just couldn't spark any interest. So when you consider those two and so little interest for them leading up to the election, the huge blowout numbers just didn't make much sense. It, they, they were... They're trying to suggest to us that people hated Trump so much that they voted overwhelmingly. But if that were true, then then there wouldn't be 12 million additional votes for Trump. And especially now that we know that a lot of those votes uh, were from categories that weren't supposed to vote for Trump. It's a lot of women, um, a lot of blacks, a lot of Hispanics, lots. Those Those people weren't supposed to be voting for Trump at all, and yet they're coming out. And you see the rallies, and you see the rallies after the election. You see that 
that there's a lot of excitement for Trump and there's just none for Joe. I mean, when he does show up for something, there's no one there. Uh, we've seen it. You know, you see the places like half empty. It's, oh, it's COVID. Well, oh, whatever. You know, I, I think everyone's just completely done with COVID at this point. And, oh, we got a new variant. Okay. How do we, when they're testing, okay, first off, we know the tests are, are bunk. I mean, they're, they're way over testing these things. If, if you've been, if you've been standing next to somebody with just a, a basic case of the sniffles, you'll probably test positive. The tests are tweaked up that high. Any cold will trigger this thing. But how do they know that suddenly, oh, this is a new variant? If the tests aren't all that great for COVID, how, how, how can they determine this as well, this, this is a new variant of COVID? I, 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 somebody please explain that to me because I've yet to understand how they suddenly know that now this isn't, my point being this, this is the cold, folks, or it's this year's flu. I, it's just like the last thing. Yes, COVID was real. No, it wasn't nearly as bad as they said it was going to be. Yes, it was horrible if you got it and you're susceptible. That's like less than 5% of the population is really susceptible to it. I was one of those people. It sucked. I didn't like it one bit. I was sicker than a dog. But I got over it. Not everyone does. I understand that. It's tragic. But the flu takes people out every single year. So when they're talking about the new D variant and the numbers coming, oh my God, I've never seen this happen in the summer. And all that. It's like, guys, would you please just, just go back into time, the time machine, and look at the numbers from the past. Just like look at the numbers last year and compare that to the years prior. If you use your own time machine, <laughs> which is easy, right? The internet, just, just do a little research. Compare right now to the past. There's nothing exceptional other than the way we deal with all this stuff. And we've talked about that a lot. You know, it's like the whole mask thing. There's no evidence that masks are effective at all. And we've had over a year to, to you know, look at, well, how did this work out? The areas that masked, how did they do compared to the areas that didn't mask? Ah, they didn't do any better at all, at all. Maybe they did worse. How did the lockdowns do? Horribly. We know people committed suicide, overdosed murdered, I mean, you did everything bad under the sun because they're going stir-crazy nuts. And then, of course, you know, the federal government's been juicing everybody's unemployment checks, and so people aren't showing up to work, and people are bored, and they've got, they've got some money to burn, but they, they don't have something to keep them busy all day, and so bad things happen. I mean, the, the way we dealt with this thing is a nightmare. And really knowledgeable people who have been there, done that, uh, told us that this is what was going to happen, the way we're going, and sure enough. But for some reason, you know, we're not supposed to listen to the old voices that had experience. You know, when they say listen to the science, the science has been anything but scientific. You know, scientific stuff is like, well, look, we've got these theories. Let's see which one plays out, right? Let's compare these things. Let's, let's seriously track numbers. You know, let's Let's get together and, and try to figure out the right answer. So none of that was happening. Is people would come out with, you know, oh, you got the hydroxychloroquine. No, you can't. Uh, ivermectin. No, no, you can't. It's all these things that, that work. People know work. No, no, we can't talk about those. You can't post it on the internet. You can't do any of that stuff. Nope. You got to. You can only use these tools in this toolbox, and 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 we're working hard for you. <laughs> and oh, by the way. You got to get shot up with a vaccine, even if it doesn't work. <laughs> and, and so that's what we're going through now, right? Is the, oh, well, you know, everyone should get the shot. Uh, well, but people who are getting the shot are, are getting the virus. Well, of course they are, because we told you it wouldn't solve the problems. And, and wear a mask. <laughs> no, 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 guys. I mean, we, we've seen how this has all played out. And it's been a, been a horrible, it's a power play. All because of the time machine. It's all to cover up what they've done because they have used the time machine basically to change those numbers. Change those numbers that showed us that Trump won into numbers that showed us that Biden won. And by doing that, they had to hide everything that pushed their man to the front. It's made a huge mess. And it, everyone feels it. Everyone feels disappointed in leadership because of the way they dealt with this COVID thing and how it keeps changing. It's like, oh no, you have to get a vaccine. 
Well, but we won't have a vaccine for years. Oh, God, a vaccine came out. Well, maybe it's not safe because Trump did it. Oh, well, Biden's elected. Okay, well, it's safe. Everyone get the vaccine. Oh, we're going to get vaccine everybody. Except they told us while they're trying to beat Trump that, well, maybe they wouldn't take the vaccine because it was Trump's vaccine, right? <laughs> you know, remember Kamala? You know, but then they later, no, 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 it's fine. It's our vaccine. And, and you know, meanwhile, people are... are getting the vaccine and, and becoming ill. Not everyone. Most aren't, but some. And, and enough that it's, it's a lot compared to other vaccines. And it is an experimental vaccine. You know, this is a vaccine unlike any other that, that they've ever made. You know, they don't use the, the same system at all. And it doesn't work the same way. It works genetically. Um, so it's, it is kind of an odd thing. And, and I, I don't want it. I, I've, I don't need it. You know, I've got natural antibodies. Everyone at this point has got T-cell immunity. I mean, it would be very unusual for somebody not to, unless they're just hiding all the time, and, and then they don't have immunities to anything. So I, they've got bigger problems. But for the rest of us who have not hidden inside our house with our head in the sand, you're going to be fine. You know, I, chances are very, very, very much in your favor. Uh, for those of you that get sick, there are treatments. There are really good, effective treatments. Even if they keep them hidden, there are. Will some people still die? Yes. Uh, sadly, people will always die. You know, that's just the thing. I, you know, we've talked about this before, too. If, if you remember, staph infections, stuff like that, were really on the rise in hospitals, especially around here. You know, they're having a hard time getting enough staff back then. You know, it's hard to get good orderlies to clean up and, and make sure the hospital's nice and clean. As uh, an unfortunate visitor to hospitals in the last few years from time to time, I can tell you, they're not very clean. And that was causing some big problems for them. Well, all of a sudden this COVID thing comes along and they've got, they've got more problems because now they've got less staff. People don't want to work around this stuff. Um, and you face it, anywhere you go, I don't care if it's the, the hardware store or a restaurant, everyone is shorthanded. There's just not enough staff. Medical field is no different. And it's certainly around COVID and everything else, it's very stressful. A lot of people don't want to work in those conditions. I don't blame them. But my point is this. The old problems that they're having at hospitals, they're still having. But you don't hear about it. Everything is COVID now everything. It's like, oh, well, maybe he didn't have COVID when he got to the hospital, but he sure got it while he was in the hospital. <laughs> you know, it's the same thing, right? Like I was saying, infections run through these hospitals. It's unfortunate, but it's true. And you shouldn't even have to go to the hospital. You should be able to get treatment, you know, these inexpensive, effective treatments. You should be get, getting these things from your doctor. It should be easy, but that, that's not what we've done. So, what we've done is we've created a bigger catastrophe with this pandemic than, than had to be. It was made into a big deal to, to ease the whole mail-in voting process and mess around with it and disguise the time machine, right? But like everything, when you mess around with the time machine, it turns into a bigger snowball because maybe you could control it at a certain level, but now it's like, well, hold it. Are, are we okay with the vaccine or do we have to have, you know, people are, are confused. It's like, what's, what does this mean? Because I've been through this trouble. Now I don't know if, if I got the shot, if I'm going to die from the damn shot. You know, why do I have to wear a mask? I went through this thing. We went through this lockdown. It doesn't make sense to people because it doesn't make sense. What it means is that they're trying to keep people quiet and locked down and under control as long as they can get away with it because they've got a mess here. Now, the other problem is, you know, if you cheat to win at an election, you didn't earn that position. So, in reality, you don't have 80 million people's support. Maybe you've got 60 million people's support. You've got less support than what you're advertising. Now, it's funny, uh, just recently, I've seen this happen to uh, one of the internet personalities that um, had to clean his, his membership file up a little bit. And, you know, you're probably familiar with bots, you know, these, these, these fake accounts that'll log in and they'll, they'll, they'll help increase your numbers. And 
sometimes these people are just, these bots are there to monitor what you're doing, but sometimes people actually pay to have this done. Um, as a musician, I'm kind of familiar with this too. You know, let's say you have a new song. People won't even listen to your song unless it's got a certain number of listens already. You know, it's like, well, it's only got five people have listened to it. I, I'm not going to waste my time because there's thousands and thousands of new songs. And I'm going to listen to this one that's very popular with 100,000 listens or likes. Um, so what people can do is they go to these folks that have a bot farm, as they call it, or there's other names, but they they use a, a whole bunch of phones chained together or computer program, or there's a bunch of different ways to do it, but they generate false numbers. They just, they just keep hitting on your song over and over and over and over to build your numbers up. There's no one actually listening. There's just a bunch of phones all dialed, you know, into this computer system. You know, people always game whatever they can, right? And, you know, that's again where we come in with the time machine, right? Because, you know, think of a horse race, right? If you're listening to a horse race on the radio, you don't know what horse actually won. If, if you're listening to the guy and he's telling you play by play, and, ah, number six wins by a nose. Oh, okay. But how about if you're there and it's like, no, number four won. But, you know, the people on the radio have no idea. And that's kind of, you know, that's what they're working on here. It's like, look, you don't, you don't know what really happened because you can't see inside the machines. You can't see how everyone voted. We're going to tell you how it you know, turned out, and you've seen this before, and we've assured you in the past how great all this stuff is, and, and you have nothing to worry about. But again, that's the problem with the time machine. Once you mess around with it, 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 doesn't, it, it doesn't hold up very long. Eventually, people figure it out. They're like, hold it. This isn't right. So we skipped a step here, you know, because there's just too much stuff too many loose ends. And so that's where we are right now. We're looking at this thing. We're looking at, at, at Biden. It's like, my gosh, this guy is, he's, he's mentally, he's, he's just slipping away. I, I watched him last night and, you know, he was, he's, he's supposed to kind of make an impassioned speech, you know, so people get back on the mask thing and get their shots and all this. And you know, that's his big message. And he started off pretty strong and, you know, obviously he doesn't write this stuff, you know, but as he's reading through the thing, you could see at the very end, he's so tired and he just could barely just get through it. The president of the United States of America. No, I mean, you know, we're, we're used to seeing Trump love him or hate him. I mean, the guy is on top of everything. The guy is just, he'll answer every single question. He knows exactly what's going on. But that's what's required to be an effective president. You've got to be on top of everything. Biden's not on top of a single thing. I, honestly, and it's a shame because, you know, he was never my favorite guy. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I've never been very fond of, of Joe. Um, he's just a mouthpiece for, for the left. But there's a guy that, you know, had a long career, and, and, and he's going to be judged by this in the end, and it's going to be a catastrophe. Valerie Jarrett just came out pushing uh, Obama's birthday, and... Uh, and it's I, actually today is uh, is Barry's birthday, number sixty. And he's gonna have a big shindig up there in Martha's Vineyard, which is so funny. He bought a, a place right by the ocean, and we're supposed to have the, the sea levels coming up and all this stuff. But yeah, they <laughs> they don't believe their own lies. Um, and and Valerie Jarrett had posted this thing, oh, you know, maybe donate $60 or $6 on the 60th, which, you know, 666 thing is just so typical of the lift. Um, but it reminded me of, you know, oops, I better sum up quick. But it reminded me of the Obama years and uh, and how it wasn't always Barry driving the, the bus, but, but we didn't know it, right? Now we know how much, you know, Valerie had to do with it. And Joe's not driving the bus. And Joe's not driving the time machine. But the people who did, just like in Obama's presidency, they made a big mess of it. And it's going to get cleaned up here really shortly. So hold on to your shoes, folks. Um, I think this whole thing is about to break wide open, and i got a lot to say about it as it breaks open. The time machine. Have a great day. Thanks. <laughs>